who here has heard the HPC experiment? Anything crazy like that HPC yeah. experiment? Yep. The camera is here. Oh, sure. <laughs> I keep <laughs> darting out of the camera. I didn't know there was a camera. Um, so uh, I'm one of the founders of HPC experiment, which later became the Uber Cloud, which is the company that I'm, uh, I'm currently the CEO of. Um, the goal of HPC experiment was we said, hey, uh, there's something called HPC, there's something called uh, cloud. There might be an intersection of the two uh, because HPC folks are always looking for more resources and cloud seems to ha have a lot. Um, during one of the keynotes um, at the ISC conference, somebody made a comment saying, uh, at this point, AWS is probably bigger than any um, HPC machine out there. Uh, it would probably be uh, on the top of top 500. Um, it's not a single thing. I understand that. Um, but there, there can be very interesting uh, properties. So no signal. Great. So um, I, uh, I, when I tried to figure out how we could use the cloud for certain types of HPC workloads, understanding that not every single type of workload would fit in, I stumbled across computer-aided engineering, especially people like CFD users would love to have more CPU cores, so let's go take a look. And um, back in 2012, we started looking at um, if we can get CFD type of workloads and then many others, computer-aided engineering workloads, running in the cloud. And one of the problems we found was every time we wanted to run something in a foreign environment, any remote environment, in the cloud, pub public, private, somebody else's hardware, uh, taking the code into that environment was the toughest problem. So if we could, uh, many cases we could find hardware that we could use, but it just took way too long to get the code running in a reasonable fashion on that, on that environment. So who here heard of container, the word containers, Linux, con Linux containers for the first time in, at a conference? On the internet? Yeah? Some kind of newsletter? Yeah. So I happened to come up with the word container and start writing a spec on my own to solve the exact same problem. And now I open it up and just basically laugh at it because I was so far off from where containers are today. Um, and you should, you should have seen my face when I heard about Docker for the first time. Um, yeah. Or here. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Apparently, I didn't need slides. So, um, as a as a result of um, uh, ex our experimentations, um, we we put out the word with our dear friends at HPC Wire. They they got the word out for us, and the HPC community flocked in. And uh, we uh, we did about 200 experiments so far. All of these are completely donated hardware, donated software licenses, so on and so forth. And there is probably uh, a a use case similar to what you are going through at at this point, we took these HPC workloads and ran them on the, on the cloud. Uh, the mortality rate for our first year was over 50%, so we failed more than half the time. Second year, it improved a little bit. You know, we were two thirds successful. Nowadays, our, um, uh, our sheet is pretty clean, so we, uh, we can run just about any type of workload in a cloud environment. Whether or not it's performance is a different question. Um, then uh, we commercialized uh, what we have learned, and now we have uh, a marketplace full of uh, CAE applications which can be run in various clouds. That's what UberCloud does. Um, our, all of our learnings for the last four years are in, uh, in the public domain. Uh, we, we publish uh, an annual, um, we call it compendium. I've never heard of the word compendium either, but um, when we publish the first one, it means a collection. Um, and um, he, here is what we think you can get by running high performance computing in the cloud. After doing all of that experimentation, we found what was already obvious. So I know it's break time. I, there are other things I want to talk about, but I, I will save them to my HPC, state of HPC. I'm sorry? Yeah? Okay, uh, so maybe I can, 
go a little bit more, and then maybe we can do a demo um, in, a, in a later session. How does that sound? All right. So um, the, the biggest benefit we found, and this is, uh, this is not um, easily translatable to the HPC environments. In an HPC environment, you have a static amount of hardware, and you try your best to schedule your workloads, uh, the, your various types of workloads, on top of that infrastructure. Cloud completely changes that. So most of our deployments, we deploy a single user inside of a, of a cloud. So they are not competing with any other workload. So the idea is, um, if uh, it's like a disposable HPC cluster. So if you need eight nodes, just get eight nodes. There, I don't, I don't easily find a point to, for example, go build a huge um, stack of resources in the cloud and try to assign many different workloads on top of that. So basically, what happens is your cloud API becomes your job scheduler. Very interesting thought, very interesting properties. Play with it when you get a chance. Um, just put your individual users into different um, cloud stacks and, and see what happens. Um, the, uh, the other big benefit that we found is uh, faster time to solution. Um, figuring out uh, a supercomputer or an HPC center where you can run your workload happens to be a pretty tough process. Try to get into Lawrence Livermore Labs and convince them that you want to run something there. Um, cloud happens to be more readily available, so uh, your time to solution shrinks by quite a bit. Um, and when you run things in the cloud, we found you can just give the user the keys. I mean, we are all paranoid about what we put into our HPC cluster, right? In the cloud, this completely goes away because all users are isolated from each other. So give them root. Um, let let them blow it up if they want to, and all you have to do is delete it when they're when they're done. So this is a very interesting property. Makes your uh, it literally turns the world upside down when it comes to managing an HPC environment. Making sense so far? Am I seeing puzzled faces? <laughs> okay, good. Um, I, all I'm trying to do is just give you give you new thoughts. Um, and what we found is um, engineers have been for a long time constrained with what their computing environment can do. So they always wanted to run um, uh, more simulations which are finer, uh, finer grained. But um, there's this magical thing. I go ask an engineer, how, how long does your workload run? It runs overnight, overnight, overnight. Or I'm like, oh, wait, I know what these guys are doing. They are oversimplifying the problem, so it just runs overnight. Um, because they don't want to wait a day, two, a week. So when I asked them, could, if you had more resources, could you, could you use it? They were like, absolutely, yes. So apparently, that, that, was, a, that was a constraint that they want, did not want to have. Time is up. This is perfect. So um, we'll see you after the break. Yeah. Thank you.